All right, fellas, I'm loading up a dumbbell press tutorial just so that my buddy Sam will upload his version of it. I've been asking him to make this freaking video for like two years now. I'm just going to fuck around and make my own so bro will make his. All right, what's going on, fellas? The long-awaited dumbbell bench tutorial. Paris, you thought you were going to beat me to it with your punk ass. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it shitty, but I'm doing it first, baby. All right. So... Paris, come get this work. But <laughs> that aside, I'm just gonna tell you guys why uh, dumbbell benches are one of my absolute favorite bench assistance movements, both for myself and for my many clients who fall into many different demographics, men, women, natty, not natty, long limbed, short limbed. I still find dumbbell bench uh, making its way into just about everybody's program if they have access uh, for Quite a few reasons. We're just gonna go over a couple today, um, but I find them to be absolutely one of the uh, assistance movements I'm most heavy-handed with giving out. So uh, reason one why I find myself giving these out so often is just I feel a well-executed dumbbell bench is one of the most potent tools we have for developing the pecs, which always is a good idea. It's a primary mover in the bench press. Bigger pecs is always going to help you bench more, and it's always a good idea, but especially early in our training career, um, kind of the strength we've developed through day-to-day -day life. We got a little bit of strength in the arms. We move stuff. We pull stuff. We push stuff. We got some bicep strength. We got some tricep strength, but we don't find ourselves in this deep stretch pec position very often. So early on in our training careers, many lifters struggle to generate good force off the chest. What I like to describe a lot of good bench pressers have a pop off the chest. Developing that ability to create pop off the chest is something this assistance movement, in addition to our regular benching, does very well. And it's something I do place a huge premium on early in people's training career. And even as they get more advanced, bigger pecs is always gonna help us bench more. It's one of the primary movers. And this remains one of my go-to tools for developing the pecs in addition to our specific bench press training. I think you don't really outgrow it until you kind of get to the point where maybe your gym doesn't have the dumbbells. Maybe we need to look to a chest press machine Maybe we need to look to getting a camber bar. There's things we can do once we outgrow the dumbbells. But if we got heavy dumbbells, even my very, very strong, very advanced 500 pound benchers are making regular use of this uh, assistance movement, both just for like a general hypertrophy tool for the pecs, but also I do find it is one of the most potent things we can do to develop that pop off the chest, that strength right off the chest. Obviously, it's gonna help strengthen all of the range of motions. It's relatively specific. It's, it is just a bench press with a different implement. So it's gonna carry over to all ranges of motion, but I do think it is one of my favorite tools for developing that speed off the chest getting some big old titties. So one of the reasons they're my personal favorite bench assistance movement to this day, uh, they were definitely a part of my road to the 600, uh, is because they are one deviation less stable. Uh, there's a lot of very intelligent discussion going on about like, hey, is stability training all that good? Like we don't want to stand on a BOSU ball. It's probably not the best assistance movement to a squat. Why are we hanging kettlebells from the bar? How useful is it? And I think like a lot of things, uh, the poison is in the dosage. I do think that taking exercises and making them just one small deviation less stable can yield some really good motor learning and then maybe some strength to the stabilizers um, without being so self-limiting that it becomes like completely irrelevant like standing on a BOSU ball. And I think that benching with dumbbells is that deviation one away that kind of challenges the stability but in a way that's very relevant. And I find when my dumbbell bench with the form that we're about to go over is strong, my negative feels a lot more consistent and locked in when I go to do heavy benches. It doesn't feel variable at all. It feels very stable. I can pull the bar to the exact spot I want. Um, and I find myself misgrooving a hell of a lot less often when they're present. And I've observed that very consistently. Now, on the uh, more on the let's say semi-advanced venture side of things, another reason I find myself giving them out often is a lot of guys will get their bench press form very efficient at displaying maximal strength. Right, that might mean a very wide grip. That might mean a meaningful arch to where we are reducing the range of motion. Maybe you have a very, very proficient, lots of guys, when they combo the big arch and the wide grip, they use a soft touch technique, but maybe you have a very efficient heave that is competition legal, right? We pause at the lowest point of the sink and then we throw the bar with our legs, but our butt stays in contact with the bench. There are some very good benchers through history that had a pretty sizable heave. Um, all of these things are good for displaying maximal bench press numbers, but all of these things kind of pollute the well a little bit in terms of the bench press being as good of a hypertrophy tool, as good of a general developmental tool. So having something like the dumbbell bench where we 
take away that ability to transfer leg drive directly into the bar, and we take away this reduction in range of motion we have in our regular bench, uh, can help fill in some of the gaps that would naturally emerge from doing nothing but specific bench press training uh, with some of these form things that we've adopted to lift a lot of weight, right? Um, I like to pull into an arch so we're pressing in that same plane, but we row past where the bar would touch, so that way we're still not, we're not cutting the range of motion, and we can kind of maximally develop the pecs. As I said, tons and tons of reasons I like these. I could probably waffle all day about how these are my jam, but the last one I kind of wanted to mention is I find that having some strength in a position slightly more than what we're doing in the bench press, so having strength in excess, in excess in mobility, right? So just like how I like having an athlete be able to do like a nice deep RDL, uh, maybe a nice deep squat, even if their regular squat is to competition depth, being able to do a high bar where they go deeper, I like to see a little strength in excess range of motion, and I find that provides some durability. Now, I don't have some wonderful citations here. Uh, I think you could get into a very good argument of like, hey, tissue tolerance is position specific. Uh, if we have good specific preparation, our injury risk should be manageable, and I'd say, yeah, fair enough, but I do find that doing something where I load the pecs to a bigger stretch, pause, drive out, being reasonably strong at a motion like that makes me pick up very small pec strains a hell of a lot less often on my bench. And those of you that watch this channel that are already pretty big bench pressers, you'll know that that's one of the biggest hiccups to driving your bench press to the next big number that you want. You kind of have this idea of like, okay, you know, I probably have to push my food. I know these are the assistance movements that work. This is the frequency that works. I've got this framework, but it's a matter of, do matter of doing it without picking up these small injuries and getting banged up. I find these are a great investment for that as well. All right, so this is not actually part of like the specific like form that's unique, but I feel compelled to talk about this because I see a weird number of people complaining about this. In my opinion, if we're doing flat dumbbell presses, uh, kicking the weights back into position ourselves shouldn't be a big use of energy. I see people using that as a critique of dumbbell bench, uh, being like, oh, you know, you kick back, it so, uses so much energy, it's so hard. And for like an overhead press with dumbbells, yeah, that can get pretty rough. Like maximal pressing weights, kicking them up into position can become pretty challenging. But in my experience, flat dumbbell bench, if you have the right technique, it should be negligible in terms of energy cost. Uh, and I suspect a lot of people are doing it, I'm gonna say wrong. Uh, I have done, I wanna say 170s or 180s, kicked back into place myself um, when I was a good bit weaker and it was not an issue. So really quick, <laughs> I know this is, most of you guys probably do this just fine, but instead of going one at a time, the way I think you should do this is arms are gonna be like relatively straight and we're gonna rock back as a unit and everything is gonna come back together rather than kicking them one at a, at a time like we would with like a overhead or maybe an incline dumbbell bench. I find once you get this down, you have to make sure you're lined up with the bench so you're not misaligned because it's gonna be hard to scooch into place with maximal weights. But once you have this down, you should be able to comfortably do this with just about anything you can press because as you get stronger and stronger, the dumbbells get taller, which makes this easier. So when it should, should, should start getting harder, it kind of auto adjusts to still be easy. So literally all we're doing is we're just rocking backwards as a unit, kind of in, like in like a fetal position. The knees come back with the dumbbells. We kind of catch them at the top. We don't catch them at the bottom. So we just go like this. And then I like to swing my legs to pull into my arch. I bench with my heels up. You might bench with your heels down, but I do like to pull into my arch by bringing my legs down. So one more time, all we're doing, arms are pretty straight. Whole thing, we're just a big ass caterpillar. We rock back with the arms straight. This should not be hard. You might need a little practice. I think it took me a couple of sessions to get down myself, but all we're doing is this. All right, so we're gonna have my lovely assistant Kirsten demonstrate because uh, I am a fat fuck, so it's a little harder to see what I'm doing. I weigh like 260 right now, a little bit less. Uh, it's a little less clear with my positioning. So we're gonna have Kirsten demonstrate. She's very good at these. She told me to inform you that she is regularly hoisting the 60s 
on this kind of dumbbell bench, but we were just using the 30s because we are not training right now. I saw Paris's Instagram thing saying he was gonna beat me to this video, and uh, we immediately went out to the garage. But she's gonna use that same technique, rock back. I know most of you guys know this, I just, I suspect a lot of people aren't doing it as well as they could because it really shouldn't be a major use of energy. And then she's gonna pull into her arch. If you fall in like the normal bell curve, we're not in some extreme circus arch and we're not completely fat, but flat back, we probably wanna replicate that arch just to have some basic specificity of like, our press is a slight decline, we probably want this to also be a slight decline. So just getting into your arch, it probably won't be quite as good as your arch with your full setup on a regular bench if you're a power lifter, but we're gonna pull into our arch and we're gonna get our back somewhat tight. I see a lot of people make no effort to get their back tight. Now, when we say back tight on these, Big emphasis on scaps down, so scapular depression. I do see people do their dumbbell benches really shrugged up, and I don't like that. We don't necessarily need to get a maximal retraction. That might feel a little awkward. And a lot of people find their pecs actually feel a lot healthier if they use their dumbbell benches as an opportunity to kind of have a little bit more active protraction retractions. So we're not squeezing back as hard as we can the whole time. Maybe we do just pinch back slightly, but we're focusing on down being the big priority, locking in the lats. Scaps can be back slightly, and we might have a little bit of kind of protraction, retraction through the press, where we press a little further through than we do normally. This, can, this is probably healthy for especially like our pec minor, which is awesome, uh, but some people might just squeeze their back. Whatever you feel, uh, better do it. Um, so would you demonstrate up to that point, kind of that setup, and what that looks like for you? Good, so pulls into our arch by kind of pressing backwards, getting up on our traps, back is tight. Now, the next thing that we're gonna have Kirsten demonstrate is the actual press itself. Again, there's nothing fancy here, but I think it's worth watching even if you're advanced because I think we should be refining our fundamentals. I kind of include this in the fundamentals of increasing the bench press because I just, I think it's a really good tool that we should be able to get more out of less, right? So at one point I was like pumping out 160s, uh, and it was helping my bench to some degree. And then I kind of discovered this technique and it didn't, it didn't nuke my numbers. You know, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I was suddenly getting my ass kicked by the 60s. No, I wasn't. I was pretty strong, you know, but I dropped back to doing like sets of like eight to 12 with the 120s at first. And it ended up helping my bench press a lot more. I think a lot of people will number chase their accessories when really they're a means to an end. And there's a certain execution of the accessories that's gonna carry over better. Getting stronger within that specific execution is a great idea, but just getting stronger by whatever means necessary on the assistance work, if it's a deviation from that technique we expect to carry over, probably a mistake that a lot of us have made. So the next thing is when she's kind of lying down, um, we're gonna select our hand angle. And this is gonna kind of depend on how strong we are and how big the dumbbells we're pressing are. Uh, you'll see Kirsten just rotates them a little bit. The bigger the dumbbell, the more we have an issue with the dumbbell itself limiting our range of motion. That's why really big dumbbells can be a bit of a circus trick. You'll see someone that benches like, let's just say mid fours, and I've seen guys do the 200 pound dumbbells, and you're like, that man, that's a crazy ratio, but it's because they run into your chest, and it ends up being like a top half partial. It's more of a trick than it is a good assistance movement at that point, and maybe not even a very good pec development tool. Uh, but by rotating the dumbbells, we we kind of can get the big part of the dumbbell out of the way. And again, we can try to get a greater range of motion than we could get with a barbell. And ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. You might not be able to at first, but our goal is to get this big, deep stretch kind of touching to the same point we bring our barbell to. A lot of people will intuitively bring way lower. Uh, that is you trying to, usually trying to not open at the pecs and try to do like a shoulder dominant dumbbell press. Probably a good sign that you're not confident in your pec strength and doing these and getting your pec stronger will definitely help your bench press. I see a lot of people do that. But you're gonna pick your angle of rotation. Someone like Sebastian Oreb is a big advocate of going full parallel grip because he's like, well, we already do all of this pronated grip in our training. Why not just take the opportunity to do a little bit of variety and go full neutral? And he likes that. Um, Kirsten likes to just go as much as she needs to, no further. I really like for most people just turning to 45. Um, rather than going full neutral, rather than going pretty pronated, we're just gonna go to 45 for most people and I find that works quite well. So we're keeping the sternum high, the scaps are down, slightly retracted, dumbbells are turned to 45, we bring it down and we're trying to draw our chest upward, right? So we have this line of our chest and we have the line of where the bar would be if it was a barbell. And we're trying to get that line of the barbell 
lower than the chest. Part of that's by drawing the chest up, which will place a bigger stretch on our pecs. Part of that's by rowing into the bottom. We row, 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 row into this bottom. We get this solid bottom position. We have this big stretch in our pecs. We try to keep our head back on the bench press. That's one of the common errors I see. We hit a definite pause. We press all the way to a lockout with a quick pause. I see a lot of guys pump them out and that will help with power off the chest, but we talked earlier about how it does have some cool stability benefits. I find you get those stability benefits by going to full lockouts every rep. Just my opinion, as someone who has done a lot of pump out partial reps, uh, got a sick pec pump from them, but I do think they're a better bench assistance movement this way. So she's gonna pull into her arch, good back tightness, scaps are depressed. She has her hands in the angle she likes, head is pinned back to the bench. Sometimes I even cue kind of back of the, like back of your neck pinned to the bench. Because a lot of the time, athletes will lift their head to get away from, again, getting into this lengthened position of the pecs and strengthening that lengthened position. That's gonna be so helpful for your bench press. A lot of people will lift their head, kind of round their upper back to get away from that. Would you do a couple of reps? Good, so she, you can see she rows it in that last little bit to get a little bit more stretch on the pecs, hits a definite pause, drives up. Pause slightly longer. <laughs> Good. Perfect. So, really quick, we're just gonna run through some random stuff that comes to mind in terms of what I see people botching. We already talked about the bastardized kickback where they kept do one at a time and catch them at the bottom rather than rocking back as one unit and catching them at the top. It also makes for a very easy dismount, assuming you didn't fail your final rep, to just rock back up. Um, the next thing I see a mistake is people will not get stable with their feet. They treat it, they're like, oh, it's not a comp bench press, so I'm not gonna get stable. We output force better when our st perceived stability is better. So we're gonna be able to work to the upper capacities of our muscle better. If we do kind of plant our feet similar to how we do on our bench press, if you bench with your heels up and your feet tucked like I do, you do kind of swing them into position there. If you bench with more solid kind of feet flat, um, what is legal in the IPF style, then more it's about sliding up onto your traps as Kirsten showed. Uh, lots of people will think, oh, well this is supposed to be for my pecs. I'm gonna flat back it for the range of motion. I find it carries over a hell of a lot better if we do keep the chest high, places a bigger stretch on the pecs, and it does place, we're still getting a big range of motion by rowing past where we would be able to get with a bar, but this way we're able to um, keep it like that plane um, of pressing, the same plane that we press in for our bench press, and we might find a little bit more direct carryover uh, to our bench press that way. Uh, aside from that, the, the errors are obvious in kind of like not doing what we just went over, where people will square the dumbbells up so they could do partials and inflate their ego, uh, no pause at the bottom, uh, touching to a point that isn't where we touch on the bench press. We want to be bringing it to basically where we would be touching with a barbell. Uh, Sometimes even slightly higher if we want to place a premium on the pecs, but some people who are scared of lowering their pecs will do their dumbbell bench where they go, and they're like, okay, well, I got to go up, go in neutral, and I'm going to go into my arch, but I'm going to touch real low. And it's like, we're trying to get out of loading the pecs by doing that a lot of the time. Um, aside from that, what are common issues? What do you think? That's the biggest one, I think. Yeah. Is limiting the range of motion. I see some people use the weight to jam themselves into almost an excessive range of motion where they feel like they're no longer opening at the pec. They feel like that they're opening at the front delt. And that can lead to people's shoulders getting banged up a little bit. So really trying to feel like we're opening at the pec and keeping our sternum high rather than keep letting our sternum collapse, letting our shoulders come forward and internally rotating. Just like in our bench press, we probably we want to stay stacked, keep the sternum high and row in to meet the bar halfway. We don't want to see this internal rotation here. I think that is a technical fault that is worth avoiding. Um, and then I think if you kind of standardize your form this way, getting strong will be a very good investment for you. You hear all of these advanced, ban advanced bench, wow. <laughs> Fuck. 